Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. On the 18th of April in 75, hardly a man is now alive who remembers that famous day and year. He said to his friend, if the British march by land or sea, from the town to night, hang a lantern aloft in the belfry arch of the north church tower as a signal of light. One, if by land. And two, if by sea. And I, on the opposite shore, will be ready to ride and spread the alarm through every Middlesex village and farm for the country folk to be up and to arm. Then he said goodnight with a muffled oar. Silently rode to the Charleston shore just as the moon rose over the bay, where swinging wide at her moorings lay, the Somerset, British man of war, a phantom ship with each mast and spar, across the moon like a prison bar, and a huge black hulk that was magnified by its own reflection in the tide. Meanwhile, his friend through alley and street wanders and watches with eager ears. Till in the silence around him he hears the sound of arms and the tramp of feet, the muster of men at the barrack door, and the marching tread of the grenadiers marching down to their boats on the shore. And then he climbed to the steeple of the church, up the wooden stairs with stealthy tread, to the belfry chamber overhead, and startled the pigeons from their perch. On the somber rafters that round him made. Masses and moving shapes of shade. By the trembling ladder steep and tall. To the highest window in the wall. Where he paused to listen and look down. A moment on the roof of the town. And the moonlight flowing over all. Beneath, in the churchyard, lives the dead. In the night, encampment on the hill. Wrapped in silence so deep and still. That he could hear like a sentinel's tread. The watchful night wind as it went. Creeping along from tent to tent. And seeming to whisper, all is well. A moment only he feels the spell. Of the place and the hour and the secret dread. Of the lonely belfry and the dead. For suddenly all his thoughts are bent. On a shadowy something far away. Where the river widens to meet the bay. A line of black that bends and floats. On the rising tide like a bridge of boats. Meanwhile impatient to mount and ride. Booted and spurred with a heavy stride. On the opposite shore walked Paul Revere. Now he patted his horse on the side. Ding! Now gazed on the landscape far and near. Then impetuous stamped the earth and turned and tightened his saddle girth. But mostly he watched with eager search. The belfry tower of the Old North Church as it rose above the graves on the hill. Lonely and spectral and somber and still, and low as he looks on the belfry's height. A glimmer, and then a gleam of light. He springs to the saddle, the bridle he turns. But lingers and gazes till full on his sight. A second lamp in the belfry burns. A hurry up hoofs in the village street. A shape in the moonlight, a bulk in the dark. And beneath from the pebbles, in passing, a spark. Struck out by a steed that flies fearless and fleet. That was all. And yet through the gloom and the light. The faint termination was bright that night. And the spark struck out by that steed in his flight. Kindled the land into flame with its heat. He has left the village and mounted the steep. And beneath him, 
tranquil and broad and deep. Is the mystic meeting the ocean tide? And under the alders that skirt its edge. Now soft on the sand, now loud on the ledge. Is heard the tramp of his steed as he ride. It was twelve by the village clock. When he crossed the bridge into Medford Town, he heard the crowing of the cock. And the barking of the farmer's dog. And felt the damp of the river fog that rises when the sun goes down. It was one by the village clock. When he galloped into Lexington, we saw the gilded weathercock swim in the moonlight as he passed. And the meeting house windows, blank and bare, gaze at him with a spectral glare, as if they already stood aghast. The bloody work they'll look upon! It was two by the village clock. When he came to the bridge in Concord Town, he heard the bleating of the flock and the twitter of birds among the trees and felt the breath of the morning breeze blowing over the meadows brown. And one was safe and asleep in his bed. Who at the bridge would be first to fall? Who that day would be lying dead? Pierced by a British musket ball. You know the rest. In the books you have read. How the British read, read your spy and fled. How the farmers gave them ball for ball. From behind each fence and farmyard wall. Chasing the redcoats down the lane. Then crossing the fields to emerge again. Under the trees at the turn of the road. And only pausing to fire and reload. So through the night rub her beer. And so through the night went his cry of alarm. To every Middlesex village and farm. A cry of defiance. And not of fear. <gasps> A voice in the darkness. A knock. At the door. And a word that shall echo forevermore. For, born on a night one of the past, through all our history to the last. In the hour of darkness and peril and need, the people will waken and listen to hear the hurrying hoof beats of that steed. And the midnight message of Paul Revere.